Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Bob Barber here with the next Rapture Resurrection Report. The report that watches for very unique things happening around the world, in the earth, and also in the heavens, which is what this video is all about today. That helps us to narrow down the time window of our departure, the Rapture Resurrection, our Blessed Hope, Titus 2.13, the beginning of the seven-year tribulation, and Jesus' second return to the earth. So if this type of content interests you, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that new content coming out. Folks, in our last report, we established that Jesus will be returning to the earth for his second coming to set up his millennial reign in 2030. And what I want to do in this next report is build upon the concept of of Jesus returning in 2030 and what I have to show you today is going to blow your mind we have discovered what we believe to be the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and guess what year it takes place 2030 and you know the drill subtract seven years from the tribulation and that lands us right here in 2023 and Jesus laid out in Matthew 24 29 to 31 that this sign will take place right after the tribulation ends and right before his second coming begins immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Whatever the sign of the Son of Man is that is in heaven, whether it's what I'm about to show you right now, or if it's something else, be it as it may, this sign takes place right after the tribulation comes to an end, and right before those clouds break open with the second return of Jesus Christ to the earth with his armies of heaven. Well, you really narrowed it down. We are talking about a very short time window here. So, if you can figure out what the sign is and when it takes place, that would be some pretty valuable information to find out right now, wouldn't you agree? So, without more further ado, behold, the potential sign of the Son of Man. Can you see it? Of course not. To the untrained eye, this looks like a huge mess. So what I've done is created my own artwork so we can continue with this presentation with something that's a little easier on the eyes and easier to follow. Check it out. That should help narrow it down and clean it up a little bit so that way you can see what I'm seeing. So what I'm going to do is walk you through the sign and give you our bullet points of why we believe this can possibly be the sign of the Son of Man. Now, first of all, this celestial sequence parodies the Revelation 12 sign. One, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter are involved in this celestial sequence. And two, this takes place at the Feast of Trumpets. Evidently, because you can see that the moon is at her feet, like it always is at the Feast of Trumpets every year. And which Feast of Trumpets? September 28th, 2030. You can't make this stuff up, folks. So, here's the logic. If Jesus does return in 2030, the latest that he will return that year will be at the Feast of Trumpets at the beginning of the fall feast days. And this is the last sign that takes place in the heavens as the fall feast in 2030 begin. Now, I know... God might make something else appear up in the heavens, something supernatural or something that we didn't see coming. That can happen. I get it. But until then, we don't know what this sign is going to be. So our best guess is what we're looking at here in the Stellarium. And folks, if this is not the sign of the Son of Man, if there's no chicken dinner here, we still get a constellation prize from it. Ha! Huh. Get it? Constellation? Ah, just forget it. So if this is not the sign of the Son of Man then this certainly is the heavens declaring that Jesus is returning to the earth at this point. First, in this sign, we have a combination of three different constellations. We have Leo the Lion, Virgo the Virgin, 
and Libra the scales. The planets involved with this sign are Mars, Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter, also known as wandering stars. And finally, the Sun and the Moon. Let's begin with the Sun, Venus, and Mercury. The Sun represents Jesus, Venus represents the Church, and Mercury represents the angels of heaven. Mercury, Michael, the Archangel, the armies of heaven, and in this application, Virgo the Virgin represents physical Israel here on the earth at this point. And some people will say, hold on a second, Jesus is represented in all of these celestial entities. You know what? You're right. According to Colossians 1, 16 and 17, all things were created by him and for him. So we see a picture of Jesus in everything here. Now, the next thing I want to show you is what happens a few days before the Feast of Trumpets 2030. We see that the Sun, Venus, and Mercury descending from Leo down to Virgo that represents the earth, Israel. This represents the second return of Christ. Jesus being the Sun, the light of the world, and the light is being followed by Venus and Mercury, the church, and the armies of heaven, the angels. They are descending down from the Leo constellation. And why do I say that the Leo constellation represents heaven? According to Revelation 14 and Revelation 19, where does Jesus receive his crowns? In heaven, above, where his throne is at. They are descending from above down to earth, which is represented by the virgin who represents physical Israel here on the earth. Revelation 19 verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So here you see the sun representing Jesus and Venus following the sun which represents the church and right behind Venus is Mercury representing the angels. Now something I want to point out, Venus and Mercury when it's up in the crown, the constellation of Leo along with Mars, that formed the complete crown of 12 stars that appeared in the Revelation 12 sign. And now here we are seeing elements of this crown beginning to descend down to the Virgin down to the earth. The authority of this crown is descending down to the earth. The earth is being overtaken by God's kingdom. And we see in Revelation 11 verse 15, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world, the earth, are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Elements from the crown of 12 stars are now represented on the earth. His crown, his kingdom, has descended down to the earth. Now, the next thing I want you to notice is look where the Sun, Venus, and Mercury line up on the Feast of Trumpets. It is a celestial snapshot of what is to come over the next thousand years. The Sun and Venus is sitting right at the shoulders of Virgo. What is this symbolic of? If you go to Isaiah 9.6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Hmm. And it's not just the sun at her shoulder, it's also Venus, the church, who is also ruling with Jesus, who is the body of Christ. Jesus' governing body. Revelation 12, verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God into his throne. That's the church. And now the church has returned with Jesus, represented by Venus, and settling on the shoulder of Virgo as a representation of of the man-child's rule on the earth under the headship of Jesus Christ. And Virgo the Virgin here who becomes clothed by the light of the Sun. This represents Israel getting saved. They accept him as the Messiah 
and they are able to rule and reign with him for a thousand years as outlined in Revelation 1 verses 5 and 6. So what about Mercury which represents the angels, Michael, the armies of heaven? What are they going to be up to? Probably the same stuff they've always been doing controlling weather patterns on the earth and everything else. This is why they are above the surface which represents her shoulders and more than likely continue to do things throughout the cosmos. And I believe the church will also have its hand in all that stuff as well. We are not going to be confined to the earth and our work just won't consist what's happening on the earth. So now moving on we established how this sign declares Jesus returned to the earth with the armies of heaven following right behind him. And that's outlined in Revelation chapter 19 verse 14. But if you go on to the very next verse in verse 15 what does it say? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God. Verse 21, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So basically, when Jesus returns here to the earth, he will speak a word or something that will proceed from his mouth and destroy all the armies of Satan here on the earth. Now, where do we see that represented here in this sign? Go back up to Leo, the lion constellation. Jesus, who is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. This Lion represents Jesus, God the Father in heaven. Look where the mouth of the Lion is in this constellation. And look what is right in front of the mouth of the Lion. Mars. Mars is a planet that represents war, that represents the seed of the serpent, that represents Satan. And the fact that Mars is right in front of the mouth of the lion who represents Jesus and the Bible says in Revelation 19 verse 15 and out of his mouth go the sharp sword that he would smite the nations so the weapon that proceeds from Jesus's mouth the mouth of the lion and Mars is right in front of the mouth of the lion right at this point essentially Mars the armies of Satan and the war of Armageddon on the earth are staring right down the barrel of the gun or in this case right down the mouth of the lion basically the lion's dinner plate right in front of him which symbolizes the position of the Antichrist the false prophet and their armies when Jesus returns to the earth not a good position to be in look at the picture here it looks like the lion could just easily open his mouth and devour that planet almost effortlessly and that's pretty much what Jesus does he comes down here speaks a word and this devours all the armies of Satan here on the earth and when I say devour I mean it literally because when Jesus speaks the word they all die but then there is a call for all the fowls of the earth that eat meat to come and consume devour the remains of this army according to Revelation 1917 <laughs> And then shortly after that, the Antichrist, a false prophet, gets thrown into the lake of fire. Satan, the dragon, gets bound by some regular angel and then gets thrown into the pit of hell and sealed away for a thousand years. Now, after that's all done and over with, what do we see happening next? The judgment of the sheep and the goats. And we see this in Matthew 25, starting in verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne before him will be gathered all the nations and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will place the sheep on his right but the goats on his left and we all know what happens after that works out good for the sheep not so good for the goats so now where do we see that represented here in this celestial sequence I think it's pretty obvious. Jupiter, which is the king planet, represents Jesus Christ. He is the king of kings. And where do we see Jupiter in the celestial sequence? In Libra, in the scales, the judgment scales. 
This is where Jesus establishes a balance on the earth, which must be accomplished in order to begin his millennial reign. And he achieves this balance through the separation and the judgment of the sheep and goats at the end of the tribulation. By ridding the world of all the wicked and throwing them into hell, that will be the goats on his left, and then all the sheep who are the righteous in him will remain on the surface of the earth and head into the millennial reign. This is why you see in this scale there are two arms, two platforms on the scale, not just one big scale with one big plate. There are two plates on here, a left plate and a right plate. That is the design of this constellation. And for your own information, this is what the sign looks like without the artwork in it. So make sure you get a snapshot of this, do your own studies on it, even make your own videos. If you make a video, please let me know. I'd love to see what you think of it. And once again, here is a snapshot with the artwork in it. And folks, if his return is in 2030, subtract seven years, here we are, 2023, looking for the rapture resurrection. So what do you guys think? Are we looking at the sign of the Son of Man, or is this just a celestial sign we see in the heavens that parallels the return of Jesus Christ at this time? Please comment, please share with your networks, for our time here on the earth is almost up. For that trumpet is about to sound, and our feet are about to leave the ground. It's time to finish strong, with a final influx of works that will help give you a really good day at the judgment seat of Christ. If I just woke something up inside of you, if you feel that pull right now, it would be in your best interest to check out the next part of this video. No. Greetings my family. We are all really excited because things are wrapping up right now. As you can see, the rapture resurrection is about to take place. We are about to leave this world behind and everything in it as it gets burnt to a complete crisp and is no longer useful to us. But for now, it is. What I'm talking about is resources God has provided to us for me, my family, you and your family to live here while we are on the earth, but also additional resources that we can use to invest back into his kingdom to expand our eternal rewards in heaven. We are all given that chance to be the faithful servant as Jesus talked about in his parables, whether you have one talent, two talents, or five talents given to you. Jesus did not give us that parable to be entertaining. He was trying to make a point. And when you invest these resources into his kingdom, that takes faith. And wherever your faith is at, Jesus said in Luke 6, 38, Give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over so now you have extra resources but where do you invest these resources and i'll tell you what there's a lot of brick and mortar out there for you to invest in but like i said that will all be destroyed in the coming tribulation so what will survive the tribulation and count as massive rewards for you building the body of christ for the last 10 years we have been raising funds and funding Christian missions all throughout the world. We've been providing humanitarian relief aid to new believers in hard to reach areas, jungle areas, third world countries, areas that people have just written off and forgotten about, not us. We are reaching these areas, providing the help that these people need, and then after showing them the love of Jesus Christ through the aid we provided them, we will show them the love of Jesus that he did specifically for them at the cross through the preaching of the gospel of grace, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. We're not building with wood, hay, and stubble like others are with their gigantic sized temple worship centers that will be burned up in the tribulation anyways. No, we are building with precious stones, silver, and gold that will be tried by the fire and that will last and will not be consumed because here we are adding hundreds and thousands of people on a daily basis to the body of Christ buildings are not eternal that's wood hay and stubble but spirits are gold silver precious stones so if you feel that tug right now to make a difference please don't ignore it just go to our website feedmysheeptoday.org 
There you can give by PayPal, credit card, bank draft, or just simply send your gift in the mail. The address will be there as well. And if you want to make your gift go farther, become an Easy Feed monthly sustainer. We greatly need more people to join our monthly sustainer family. Look, if we know how much is coming in the next month, this gives us the ability to leverage what we have this month to buy the supplies that we need for next month. Because sometimes we have to order stuff this month and wait for it to arrive the following month. And I think you all understand why that is because of the pandemic and stuff like that. So we greatly need monthly sustainers. So please just consider maybe just $10 a month. If you could do more, praise the Lord. But we're happy to get that $10 because every little bit counts here, everybody. So great in heaven will your rewards be from the work that's achieved here. I promise you that. May God bless you all and thank you so much for your support.